Hey, it's Matt from Z93's Morning After backstage at the Dow Event Center, a big, nearly sold-out show tonight, Breaking Benjamin, Skillet, Under Oath, and Fight the Fury. I'm joined by Ben from Breaking Benjamin, and I was just a part of the, the VIP experience, and I saw you receive what might be the coolest gift I've ever seen anyone get in a meet-and-greet. It's a, it's a Nintendo, like an NES console guitar. Yeah, it's like an original old school Nintendo turned into a guitar. And it has on the neck of it, I believe it has Super Mario Brothers, if I'm correct. Yeah, there's a, like a cartridge at the top. I didn't see what it was, <laughs> but yeah, it's probably Super Mario Brothers. What are the chances? I mean, obviously, you're probably not going to play it tonight, but is there a chance in the future you might, you know, maybe mess around with that and just kind of see how things work out with it? Well, I got to try it. <laughs> right? There's no doubt about it. So I'll probably post it on my social or something like that. But yeah. We play in this weird tuning, so I don't know if it'd be able to hold that tuning, but I'll definitely give a shout out on my socials and play a little something on it. I'm telling you, you have to uh, you have to see this thing. Seeing it get uh, pulled out of the case during the VIP, the entire band just kind of gathered around it. Like this is amazing. Yeah. It's it's pretty awesome. Man, it's probably one of the coolest things I've ever got. So we've got the uh, tonight the first show of this leg of the tour at the uh, the Dow Event Center in Saginaw. Uh, do you ever get nervous? I mean, I know you've been at this for you know twenty years at this point. Do you, do you still get nervous? Like first first day of a tour, do you get a little bit of the uh, the jitters before you go on stage? Oh, you're making me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't really get nervous anymore. It's been a, like you said, man. It's been a long time, and we're all really used to this in a great way, in the best way. And uh, we just like to go out and have fun and hang out with the with our peeps. You know, that's what it's all about. We don't. I would be nervous. It was if if we. If we were like the kind of band that, you know, we we play and you listen, but it's not like that with us. Like if something goes wrong, we'll just be the first to laugh at it. And we're just really relaxed and we just go up and just have fun. And, and everybody's just, it's like hanging out, you know, it's more like that vibe. Now you guys have been off the road for a couple of months. Do you, do you shake the rust off a little bit on this first show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably we'll go a little easy just because it's, I haven't really done much in my time off so i don't want to like blow myself out but uh but i'm still gonna go up there and have fun and everybody's gonna have fun at the end of the day that's that's all it is about so joined backstage by ben from breaking benjamin you spent a lot of 2018 uh, on a co-headlining run with five finger death punch uh how different is it doing headlining shows as opposed to switching off each night with uh, with a band like five finger i loved that tour uh you know there's just something about like when you're out with a band that is you know um really cool like those guys and all these guys are cool too um but you know it's just you kind of like um don't have as much pressure on you you know it's kind of shared everything is kind of shared and i like that um and it's just you know um we we just want to we just want to play you know we just want to go out and and play for fans and at the, and at the end of the day, like every band that we tour with wants that too. And so we just want to go and have fun. So it's all good. It's it's all the same. But that was a, that was a great tour. I love those guys in, in Five Finger. And they were, they're just such amazing people. And they're so great to us. And, and we really love them like brothers. And so that's definitely one of my top tours. And I'm kind of lonely without them. <laughs> I miss them. I miss them. They were really great. Well, hopefully by the end of this tour, you'll have the same sort of rapport with the guys from the guys and girls from Skillet and the uh, the other bands on this as well. Well, no, I mean it isn't that you know, like I love all these guys too. I'm I'm a fan of all these guys, and like I said, like nobody, you know, there's it's just another thing. And it's going to be great, and everybody in the other bands are great, and we're looking forward to it. And I'm already friends with those guys in Skillet, so everything is awesome, and we're really really stoked to be doing it with everybody here, and it's just it's going to be fun. Now, is it difficult with you guys having been at it for, for 20 years at this point, or nearly 20 years? I mean, the debut album came out in 2002. Is it difficult to come up with a set list for, for headlining shows when you have so many? I mean, Breaking Benjamin over the years has had countless hits. Is it difficult to say, all right, we need to play these ones this time, and maybe we're going to throw a couple of special tracks in there this time? Or is it difficult coming up with a set list when you have that many songs that people obviously want to hear? I wouldn't say it's necessarily difficult. I mean, it's a good problem to have to have a lot of songs. But basically what we do is we write our set list of like pretty much all of our singles, and then we have four spaces for songs to be changed like every few nights of the whatever we want to play or whatever we haven't played in a long time or whatever so that's usually that's how we have our set list set up now it's no secret that you guys do a, you you've done a medley in the past of different cover songs how do you come up with what cover songs you're going to do while you're out on the road um we usually just do it when we get to the place the first day we just figure something out and we're just going to stick with what we did the last run because our time was limited on that but as the tour goes I think we're going to change it up a little bit 
so we like to do that we don't you know we're, we're a very relaxed easygoing band we'll, we'll like um learn a song a couple of hours before and then like play it you know so we're like that you know we like to just take things like very smoothly not like do what we do seriously and to the best of our ability but not take it as a whole too seriously joined by ben from breaking benjamin the show tonight at the dow event center nearly sold out uh it's been about a year since the band released ember coming up on a year do you start getting that itch after a year to get back in the studio to start writing new music and get things going again yeah for sure man and the last album a lot of the music was contributed by the rest of the band i didn't really write um as much as i did on all of the other breaking benjamin albums and so that was really awesome i'm looking forward to hearing more from those guys more so than writing myself even though i will write myself but um yeah like the last album ember um those guys the, the rest of the band members really contributed a lot to the writing and so more than anything i'm looking forward to hearing what they come up with now, I know there's been some discussion you've mentioned in other interviews that uh, along with a new album in the future, you've also discussed the possibility of doing a uh, an acoustic album at some point. Is that still kind of in the cards? Yeah, I'm actually putting the finishing touches on it right now. So it's already been recorded and uh, so it's coming out. I don't know when it's coming out, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's about finished. Uh, we talked a little bit about the fact that the, the debut album has been out for, for quite some time now. Uh, obviously, when you go to stores now, CDs aren't in stores. People download their music. They're not buying product like they used to. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I do the same thing. Uh, how different is it than when the debut album came out now for bands to not only get started, but even a band established as yourselves? You know, do you, do you keep putting out albums? Some bands are talking about just doing singles. I mean, how different is it than it was in 2002 when Saturate came out? Yeah, it's much different. Um, but, you know, I just I write albums. You know, and I just basically just put it out like I would normally, and uh, hopefully people don't steal it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's not really that much different for me. I just I still write a whole album. I know there's a lot of talk in the media about uh, about rock being dead. You'll see different quotes from different people about how it's not the way it used to be, and hip hop is now rock and roll, and you know, uh, bands aren't selling the way they used to. Rock isn't selling the way it's it, they used to. Do you think? I mean, obviously, we have a nearly sold out show here tonight, so there's people that are still going to these rock shows. People are still out there supporting bands. So rock isn't dead, but people keep bringing it up. Well, I think you're always going to have some some audience for it. You know, there's people that like certain kind of music. They're not going to just stop liking that kind of music. I mean, you know, there's room in the world for all kinds of things, and whatever's in the mainstream at the moment really doesn't matter to what it, the passion of it is. You know, like if somebody's passionate about rock music or whatever, rap, whatever it is, you know, they'll listen to it. And um, I don't really care about anything like that. I just like to listen to and do things that move me. And so uh, whether rock is dead or not, I'll still like the music that I like. And that's the same with everybody else, you know, so it just doesn't really matter. Uh, you've got this tour going on right now with uh, Skillet and Asking Alexandria. We'll jump out a little bit later on. And then you've recently announced a, a big summer tour. It's you and Three Days Grace and Chevelle and Diamante's going to be on some, some shows. Along with that southern, uh, summer tour, what else do you guys have planned as, as 2019 continues and you get into 2020? I think it's just that, just touring, and we're just going to get on whatever we can get on and whoever's, like, really awesome to play with and just keep the ball rolling, you know, until it's time to go back in and do it all over again. And I know at some point there will be the, the acoustic album. Will there be an acoustic tour? I know you've done it in the past. Yeah, I think so. I think so. We would do an acoustic tour probably even if there wasn't an album. We just like to do that. We like to throw those in there every now and then. It keeps our chops tight because there's nothing to hide behind, you know. And our acoustic shows are, are um, we still stand up and we still play the riffs. You know, it's like a lot of people think that they're going to see something completely different than a Breaking Benjamin show. It's different in the aspect that we're playing acoustic guitars, but it's still like a rock show. Right. And so it keeps our... Um, you know, it keep, it, there's nothing to hide behind. There's no distortion or effects on the guitars to hide behind. So we do the acoustic tours just to kind of keep our chops up, too. And plus, like, fans can see it, like, us stripped down with no bells and whistles and see the, how full it still is because we have other singers in the band and, you know, other instrumentation and things like that so um yeah so they'll they'll we'll definitely do an acoustic tour to support that record and we'll probably do a couple others that are just for fun i know you're a huge star wars fan how soon are you going to go to disney to check out this uh, star wars experience have you have you like already purchased the have you figured out how you're going to get down there like right when it opens well i'll make it happen don't worry <laughs> about that uh, yeah i'm stoked about it i've been stoked about it for a long time i went on a I went to Disney World a few years ago, and uh, I was, like, really fortunate enough to get, like, a person that, like, showed me around where everything was going to be before they even, like, 
started it so it's going to be big and uh, I'm really, lo- I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, hell yeah. I have a feeling the the line for it's going to start at Disney and will end somewhere in like New Jersey or something because there's going to be so many people that are going to want to go right when it opens. It's going to be insane. Yeah, I'm probably not. I'm going to skip that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, yeah, it, it, I a lot of people are stoked about it. A lot of a lot of Star Wars fans in the world. So it's it, I'm surprised they haven't done it a long time ago. You know, they did have that like ride or whatever. Right. But um, but yeah, no, I'm. I'm just as stoked as anybody else. I mean, I'm just not going to like go the opening day and wait in line for ten years <laughs> yeah, for a two right. minute ride. I'm not doing that. But um, yeah, no, dude, I'm, I'm going to. I'll probably go dressed up. <laughs> yeah. Do you have like a? Do you have a character that you like? Would you go as say Boba Fett, or do you have like if you're going to dress up? Oh, okay, yeah, there you go. Um, no, I don't know. Maybe just a plain old stormtrooper. <laughs> just keep it simple. Yeah, and I have that. I have that. I've have. A, I have a stormtrooper. Well, I, as stoked as you are about the uh, about the Star Wars coming to Disney, I know a lot of people are stoked for the show tonight, so I want to ta- uh, thank you for taking some time out. I know you guys have got a busy schedule, so I appreciate that. Thank you for having me, man. We really appreciate you guys.